we think we know why Russia's last aircraft carrier is armed to the teeth. Russia's only aircraft carrier, the Admiral Kuznetsov, was originally designed to deploy a missile farm that was more powerful than the airplanes it launched from its deck. The downsides of the Kuznetsov have been chronicled substantially at 1945. It'll be in dry dock until 2024 and has endured numerous mechanical and construction problems. The Kuznetsov, however, had it seen battle, would likely have held its own with its array of carrier-killing missiles. It had numerous bays and tubes for launching weapons that could support a carrier battle group with several ships that also had deadly missiles. Now, let's take a look at how the Russian Navy armed this carrier. The Kuznetsov could be seen as a heavy missile and aviation cruiser that could also carry airplanes rather than just a normal aircraft carrier. Tyler Rogaway, chief editor of The War Zone, described the following armaments that the Kuznetsov featured. There were 24 rotating launch tubes on board for the gauntlet of surface-to-air missiles. The Kuznetsov had 192 of these missiles. For last-ditch air defenses, Rogaway wrote that the carrier boasted close-in weapon systems for the enemy airplanes and incoming missiles that made it past the SAMs. In this department, the carrier used six AK-630 cannons and eight Kashtan close-in weapon systems. Enemy submarines would have noticed that the Russian carrier was equipped with UDAV-1 sub-killing rockets that could also be utilized against torpedoes. Kuznetsov served as a missile truck for more munitions that could destroy enemy targets on sea. P-700 Granite shipwreck missiles adorned the carrier. The Granite can be configured for triple use for nuclear, conventional, and thermobaric warheads. The Granite has a high-explosive conventional payload of 1,600 pounds. The idea for the Kuznetsov missile farm approach was that it could challenge an American carrier battle group by staying out of range of enemy ships and airplanes and launch the sea-skimming anti-ship missiles from 350 miles away. It could then fight without using its own airplanes launched from the carrier. These missiles could swarm and overwhelm a ship's defenses by sheer numbers. Remember, the Kuznetsov would be sailing in its own battle group, which means other Soviet destroyers, frigates, cruisers, and submarines would also be sending offensive anti-ship missiles that could overwhelm American ships. The ship's aircraft group was made up of 12 Su-33 or MiG-29K. There was room for a large number of helicopters, including two Ka-27s, 18 Ka-27 PLO, and four Ka-31 rotary wing aircraft. The fighters launched from a 12-degree ski jump at the bow instead of catapults. Because of this limitation, the fighters could not carry heavy loads of ordnance. No electronic warfare airplanes were on board. Airborne early warning was done by helicopter, which reduced the range of aerial attacks that could jam enemy radar. Thankfully for the United States and NATO, the Kuznetsov was cursed. It had a floating dock accident when a 70-foot crane fell on the deck in 2018. One worker died and four were injured. This left a 20-foot hole above the waterline. And then the ship suffered a fire in 2019 from a welding accident. The blaze was not contained until a day later, after it killed two and wounded 14. So, was the Kuznetsov a carrier or a large missile cruiser that happened to have aircraft? It should be seen as a hybrid ship for supporting a contingent of other surface vessels and submarines. The Soviet and later the Russian Navy envisioned a standoff role for the missile farm, knowing that its airborne combat role from fighters was going to be limited in offensive capability. Now, with it in dry dock for an extended period, the Russians are without a carrier and not able to project power by sea. This makes the Russian Navy limited in scope, but at one time, the Kuznetsov could have done much damage with its ship-killing missiles. The U.S. Navy and surface fleets from various NATO allies breathed a sigh of relief that it never had to go up against a carrier battle group from the Russian or Soviet Navy in its heyday.